Hey, Mitch. Oh, hey, Ed. How's it going? Yeah, yeah, pretty good. Do you think we're ever going to catch a shark? Oh, I know all about shark fishing, Ed. I was on the Indianapolis, you know. Well, what's the Indianapolis? You don't know about the Indianapolis? No. Oh, Ed. There we were, coming back from our secret mission where we delivered the bomb. The atom bomb, the Hiroshima bomb. And then we got hit by two torpedoes from a Japanese sub. You know how you can tell how big it was, Ed? You look at the dorsal fin to the tail. Ed, did you ever look in a shark's eye? It's lifeless. It's a black eye. It's like a doll's eye. And then it was Thursday morning, Ed, and I was there. My best friend came floating by. His name was Harvey Simpson. I knew him. He was from Cleveland. He was a baseball player. Oh, uh, I tell you, it was something else. Hey, and then, hey, there's, hey, Bruce, Bruce, Bruce Springsteen, Bruce. Oh, look at that, Ed. That's a great white. You know, I can tell. Tail. That one there's got to be about thirty. Oh my God. <laughs> Gonna need a bigger boat. Hi, this is Ed Dollister. And this is Mitch Halleck. And welcome to another exciting episode of Mitch and Ed's Excellent Adventure. If it's your first time here, welcome. Hope you enjoy the show. If you are a regular, thanks so much for coming back. And welcome also to all our new subscribers. It's great that we're getting new subscribers with each episode. We really appreciate it. Hey, Mitch, if you are interested in finding out when a new show of ours drops or having a look at, you know, some of our past shows, what can you do? Oh, and it is easy as getting into a shark cage and loading yourself into the shores of Amity, waiting for a great white shark to eat your face off. All you have to do is hit the subscribe button right below, and you too will go on an epic adventure with me and Ed every time we go looking at TV, movies, and more right here on the almighty YouTube. Please subscribe. That'll be great. And we're talking about Jaws from 1975 by classic filmmaker Steven Spielberg. Now, I'm going to ask this. Um, did you see Jaws in the cinemas? I did, Ed. I did. I was a mere child of, I think, nine, 1975. It, well, you know what? It was one of those movies back in the day that ran for almost like a full year. Mm -hmm. And I saw what you would consider in a second-run theater right near my house. And we went there, and it was still a full house. And I remember the audience reaction to this movie, screaming, yelling. But I'll tell you, the biggest pop-up scare is when Richard Dreyfuss as Hooper goes in the boat uh, looking to see what happened. And I can't think of his name off the top of my head. Uh, oh, but the head floats up. Yes. And the, 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 like, I think there's like a worm in the eye, the eyeballs hanging out or something like that. And uh, the audience screamed so loud. I could hear it in my ears. And popcorn went flying everywhere as everyone was just terrified when they saw that, that head just bobbing That's up That's right. Down. That was one of the great jump scares yeah. in yeah, movie yeah, history. Yeah. And guess what? Actually, that was a pickup shot because uh, Steven Spielberg was saying he needed to have one extra sort of fright in it apart from when Brody sees the shark and he does that whole yeah. for the first time he needed something else in there so they wanted to get an extra um piece of uh, an extra scene in there the the company yeah. universal yeah. wouldn't do it so that Steven Spielberg actually paid two or three thousand dollars to um get that all done they filmed it in I believe it was like the uh film editors uh swimming pool where they oh, wow. covered it. yeah they so they covered the water um, with a tarpaulin. They put some milk in the uh, swimming pool to give it that sort of, to match the, the, the uh, look, you know, yeah. ocean look. And ocean. they filmed that there. And uh, with, you know, stand-ins for uh, Richard Dreyfus. And it, um, it really Oh, that's worked. not even Dreyfus. 
Not for That's the um, not for when he does the reveal. They just did some yeah. other shots. Yeah. Oh wow! I did not know that. I, so I, I, it, I it was remember a, it like yesterday. Yeah. absolutely. It was a film that sort of captured the imagination and the terrors of everyone who saw it. And as I said earlier, it was the first blockbuster. It was the first film to ever make a hundred million dollars at the box office in record time. Before that was um, the Godfather. The Exorcist. Which was like, Oh, and yeah, the, the Exorcist were sort of big, big films, but this was the um the first film to do it in such a quick succession. It soon took over the box office of um The Godfather, which I think was the biggest at that point. Um, and um, it went on to make two hundred seventy million dollars, multiple sequels and everything like that. However, it wasn't that easy to actually film because Ooh. there was a lot of problems with this film. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. One of the things around here is they filmed it up here in Martha's Vineyard, which is off the coast of Massachusetts. Great place. Been there many times. Even got this shirt here uh, for the 30th anniversary. In fact, I got engaged in Martha's Vineyard, but that's neither here nor there, Ed. Uh, the crew by Mr. Spielberg and his you know, camera crew, they never filmed in salt water. I don't know what they were thinking. And salt water is not like working in a tank at a studio where it's fresh water because it's a whole other animal, literally. And they went out there, and they didn't know anything about the tides. They didn't know anything about currents. and It was just a nightmare. And I think they even end up hiring some of the locals to work on the crew uh, because they knew everything. They're fishermen. They knew exactly how things worked and you know what time of day you would go out, when the water would be still, and what not to put in the water. Because one of the problems they had is salt water is very corrosive, mm -hmm. and it was just destroying the camera equipment, the lighting and all that stuff too. Plus you got actors who are not, you know, good out in the ocean. I know Robert Shaw got seasick very easily. And most of the time he's in that movie, when the camera's cut, he's thrown up on the side of the boat because he couldn't stand the motion going up and down and everything too. So that helped make it a longer production shoot. Plus, Ed, there was a lot of drinking on that set. Let me just tell you, when you go to Edgartown in Massachusetts, where they film, that's where Brody is, and when they go to the town hall, and when he walks into the general store to get all the supplies, that's all there. I mean, that's that's not like Hollywood backlot sets. Those are real buildings mm -hmm. in the town of Edgartown. So you can walk through there now, and you think you're on the set of Jaws. And they all stayed right down there. There was a, a hotel, an inn. It's still there. And the crew and the actors, they were all just drinking and have a good time because I think they gave Spielberg, I think it was like 40 days to shoot that movie. Mm -hmm. but it went on for, I'm going to say over a hundred days. It was I mean, seven it was, months it took to film. It was over. Yeah, it was over budget. It was over production schedule. It was a mess from word go. And Spielberg himself, this is his first big Hollywood blockbuster. He was just known for TV movies like, a duel and Columbo. He was a TV guy. Mm, he, so had he, just, had um, he had just done Sugarland Express, but they were looking for a number of directors, but Steven Spielberg was certainly um, up there given Duel because it was. Duel was, you know, Dennis Weaver against a, a giant right. truck. Demonic monster. That's right. yeah, kind of like this one is about, on uh, yeah. you know, Brody against a giant shark and they could see the correlation there. But um, yes, it was... Um, so it was very exciting, and it, but it was his first big budget movie. And he, I did read that he, you know, he was a bit of a perfectionist on the set, but didn't realize what he had gotten into. And again, as you said, fil filming on open water, the first time a, any major motion picture um, did that. And the problems stemmed with the shark called Bruce, yeah. which was named after Spielberg's lawyer, I believe. It just didn't work. No, it did not work. In fact, there's a great documentary called The Shark is Still Working or because that's what they would hear all the time. Richard Dreyfuss makes a joke about that, that they'd be setting up for a shot and the crew would come over on the walkie talkies and they would say, you know, the shark's not working quick. The shark's not working. So they would have to scrub the whole filming because you couldn't do that. But out of adversity comes ingenuity because of that. Spielberg had to go for more conceptual and more visual things he had you know the shark itself wasn't working the robot they built so he had to do the suggestion that the shark was there so you get a lot of moody you know waves and water and darkness and just the element of this like your imagination is what created that shark in your mind plus absolutely you got the brilliant score by john williams with the dun -dum, 
Bottom, bottom. Very primeval, not very elaborate, but it just scared you. And when you go on the open water, I mean, even to this day, even hey, if I go into a dirty bathtub, I'm a little scared right now because you don't know what's underneath there. You do, right. It's like going into outer space. You have no idea what's underneath those waves. It could be a little tiny seahorse. It could be a little sunfish, or it could be a 30 foot great white shark that's going to eat you in two. So, I mean, you had all that going for you. People just have a natural fear of the ocean, you know? And uh, well, you were saying with as in particular, the scene with the yellow barrels where they're chasing yeah. the uh, shark yeah. that was all that had all come out of that. The shark wasn't working. So they had to come up with a way to show that they were pursuing the shark and yeah, yeah, it yeah. works really well. You know, you just see a glimpse of the uh, a oh, yeah. glimpse of the fin here or the a, fin, yeah. a flash yeah. of the face there. And that is all you really need. And again, you know, people, um, you know, maybe modern audiences, We'll go, oh, that shake looks, sh the shark looks a well, little you, fake. You know, but you know what? What? It still looks pretty good, I think. Let me just tell you something. You talk about that, the modern audiences, because like I said, back in 75, when I saw it when I was a kid, I had to be nine years old. And I remember watching this movie, and I remember at the end of the movie, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen a movie that's almost 50 years old, when Scheider shoots the uh, tank that's in the uh, shark's mouth and it explodes, boom, you know, blows up. And, you know, smile, you son of a bitch, boom, and it goes up. The audience, and it was the first time I had been there, experienced something like that. Audience was on their feet, clapping and cheering and yelling like such a relief because you were so upset. You were watching Robert Shaw get killed. You didn't know what happened to Richard Dreyfuss. Mm -hmm. he, it had killed like the little Kitchener kid. Everybody, the, the, the naked chick swimming in the beginning, everybody was murdered by this d demonic creature, you know, this prehistoric eating machine. And then he kills him with one shot, you know, Boom, blows up, right? Such a relief. Everybody's happy. Boom, 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 clapping. You wouldn't see that audience participation, audience reaction until next year when you had the Rocky movies, which we also have done a YouTube video, and you should go watch yes. that right now. And so that was like the next big summer or a big audience participation, followed by, of course, the following year in 77 when George Lucas, Steven Spielberg's buddy, would make Star Wars, which also had people on their feet clapping. So you're talking about a magical time mm. in 1975. It's really 75 that starts this movie where the hero's coming back. Because I know they all give it to uh, George Lucas and Star Wars saying, oh, the world was just depressed from the Vietnam War. And then you had the corruption with Richard Nixon. And everybody was just anti-hero. And Luke Skywalker saved the day. But it really starts here in jaws when you got the average guy you know man versus nature type of thing and he succeeds and then you got rocky who succeeds the underdog so it's really 75 that begins that pattern of like triumphant you know one-on-one -on -one man you know underdog wins and all that stuff and jaws i think that's why it was such a phenomenal success and like you said the book rights were around for years by peter benchley who's actually in the movie he has a yes. cameo as the reporter that's the state beach by the way if you ever come back up in the states and you ever want to go to martha's vineyard i'll take you out there that's on the main drag between oaks bluff and Edgartown. Yep. there's a long uh st stretch of road and that beach where they have those little pavilions those little tents that set up there where brody's sitting there and you yes. see the camera zoom out that's just the main public beach and in fact that little bridge that goes to the little lagoon when the shark goes into the lagoon and then mm -hmm. Bites that guy in the robo. It's like, hey, what are you kids doing over there? You know, and then next, you know, his leg is floating down because he got eaten by the shark. And the uh, uh, Sheriff Brody's kids see the whole thing and they're traumatized by it. That's all right there. That's in that one little stretch of road. So there's most of the Jaws I can, right uh, I can sense a road trip on our next No, trip. seriously, because I jumped off the bridge. There's a little bridge there. A lot of folks just get up and they, they jump off. It's like 12 feet into the water. I've done that. My kids have done that. And... Uh, it's it's just so because you've seen jaws so many times it's always on it's yeah. like star wars and it's always on tv it's like captain america the winter soldier it seems to be on like every other day and you can't stop when you watch it you have to see it through the end you can't just turn it on for a minute no matter when it's on you pick it right up because you know the story in your head you know what's going to happen and it goes by so fast now mm. like i watch jaws now i can't believe like oh we're already here we're already in the orca we're already at the end of the movie boom 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 and it happens so quickly but that like i was saying that movie there you just know everything you walk around the streets of martha's vineyard you know everywhere you are you're like oh my god that's that's the scene here where brody's gonna say this and that's over there 
where uh, uh, I can't think of his the name. The mayor, where the mayor is going to the be. The mayor is, yeah, 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 yeah. And they have the town hall meeting, and you see the chalkboard, and he comes scratching the board, and it's like, you know, I don't know. It, it's something to see. I don't know many places that you can go to for such an iconic movie that really haven't changed because it's such an old New Englandy uh, sailing town, whaling town, fisherman's mm-hmm. town. They don't really change a lot. It's not like there's high rise skyscrapers there. You go to Martha's Vineyard, even though Jaws was a 1974, 75 filming, it's like they filmed it last week. So it's, it's really a good thing to do. I'm, I'm excited you... about, I'm excited about heading there. I think, I think that would be really cool. I they think the other thing a guy up here in New York that had all the props, because a lot of that stuff you mentioned, yes. they, they, they just, Hollywood just leaves stuff. When Hollywood goes to his town and films a movie, like when they did Indiana Jones here in New Haven, yep. you think they want all the stuff. They don't, they don't want to store it in a warehouse that they're never going to use again because that costs money. So they just leave everything there. They leave wires and cables and and props and a lot of those barrels that you talk about. All that was left there. The shark itself, I think, was rotted away. Mm-hmm. If I recall, they just like, yeah, we're done with this thing because it wasn't working to begin with. And somebody took it and they rebuilt the whole thing. So there's a, there's a lot of genuine props from Jaws that are still around this area that you can go find. But. So you certainly would be worth uh, visiting if you are a Jaws fan, if you haven't already. I think well, the other thing video. that makes Jaws successful, we spoke about how, you know, you don't see the shark and it's your uh, imagination does, that does all the filling in the blanks. Um, Steven Spielberg said at one point, originally this was going to be just like a B sort of movie where you could would see the shark right away. And, and yeah. having the shark not working essentially turned him from, filming like Ray Harryhausen to filming like um, Alfred Hitchcock, Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah. where he got yeah. to, um, you know, be a little bit more clever in the way that he presented it. But it also worked, I think, with, you know, you spoke about the everyman where the characters are all very well-rounded, realistic characters. And, you know, you've got Roy Scheider, you've got Richard Dreyfus and uh, Robert Shaw, uh, Lorraine Gary and uh, Murray Hamilton, oh, yeah. who yeah. plays the mayor, is um, also fan- I loved his checked shirts it was such so mid-70s it the was little fantastic. anchors he had on his uh his yes. jacket yeah yeah um which was an amazing uh you know an amazing cast all believable quite different to the actual novel if you've ever ever read jaws you know you'll find i out have that, not that um hooper richard dreyfus's character was originally in the book having an affair with um brody's wife really that they, yep that they cut out he didn't. Uh, I keep hitting my um my shit well, Lorraine, here. Lorraine um, Gray is Lorraine Gary. Yeah, yeah. She only got the part. She's uh, Zanuck's wife, right? Yes. She's the producer's wife. She slept yep. with the producer to get the part. So um, well, that's right. So uh, she was there. Also, um, Richard Dreyfuss' character originally um in the book dies when he gets attacked by the uh, shark. However. Um, the, the, there's an Australian connection to there Jack. is an Australian. I knew you were going to mention it. That husband and wife team, Ron and Valerie Taylor, who are you yes. know, legends amongst um, shark oceanographers, and basically they they took all the shark footage off uh, the coast of South Australia. And yeah. um, what they did is they they had the film with um, they used to what they did is they filmed uh, underwater the with a guy. smaller statued person so that yeah. the shark looked even bigger than it was in reality. But they got some amazing footage that um, enabled Richard Dreyfuss' character to, to survive because actually with the shark, it broke into the uh, into the shark. It broke into um, the cage. cage. Yeah. That's and, in and, the movie. Um, that thing is ripping that thing apart. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, that's that's all real. And they did some an amazing work and they would come back later on uh, Jaws 2 in 1978 as well um, to use some of the footage there. But no, I remember them. They would be on like a lot of talk shows in the day and they would talk about, you know, the making of the movie. And I remember that scene you're talking about there. And uh, I, did they not invent some type of like shark proof? The, the, the um, metal mesh. It was like, yeah, um, like a chain mail type yes. of thing. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm wearing some now, right now. So there you go. Oh, yeah, Every yeah. Australian wears it, just in case. I know, you people, you, you just got sharks everywhere. I mean, you come right? out here and, you know, something's going to attack you uh, without you know, even spiders, knowing. brown spiders, whatever you got. Yeah. They, 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 oh. every, everything, snakes, the whole place is trying That's to right. Oh, no, but, see, the uh, sharks no, no, go, no. the sharks going, ugh. No, <laughs> the thing of it is, I remember the, the whole tagline was, you know, you'd be afraid to go in the water. I was terrified. Nobody was going in the water. 
I remember that I'd go over to my grandfather's cottage and he had, it was fresh water, fresh water, yeah. mind you, not known to have great white sharks. Those are saltwater creatures, but you did not want to go in that ocean. You don't want to go in the river, the freshwater river, the lake. You were terrified. I mean, I think beaches across the country saw a decline in people swimming that summer because they were so afraid of sharks. Yes. Because everyone started thinking that. In fact, there was a guy here in Long Island who they said they based the Quint character after. Mm -hmm. And I can't think of his name right now, but he used to have a big gold earring. And he had the record for the biggest shark ever caught at the time off of Montauk, which is a pirate here off of Long Island. And uh, I'm, I'm going to say his name was Fisher. Maybe I'm wrong, even though he's a fisherman. But he was always on the local shows. He's like, oh, they based the Robert Shaw character after me. And I should be getting a paycheck from Hollywood, but I'm not getting it. I, that's all me. That's all me out there. I got the shock, and I'm the one that the uh, Captain Quinn's based on. But he was a little character around here on the docks and stuff. Everybody had shark stuff. Yeah. Everybody was into sharks. I remember shark teeth necklaces or shark tooth yes. necklaces. That was the big deal. Like, you'd go to the beach, and every cool kid at the arcade was wearing a little shark tooth around there, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah, you I, know what's I, funny? Brody, yeah, Bro, I'm in the movie when Brody is. Does Brody get fired in that? No, he gets fired in number two. He comes home drinking. Uh, but in the beginning of that movie, one of the people that you see at a lot of conventions around here is the uh, actress who's the uh, you know what do you want to call the skinny dipper in yeah. the beginning of the movie who takes her clothes off and then goes out in the water there and then the shark comes and you know that's a horrible scene. I remember that as a kid. You see her. And she starts going under the water, yep. and then she starts going back and forth, grabbing on the buoy, thinking that she's all set. And then you hear bing, 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 the, bing. The bing. what? The, the buoy. buoy. Yeah. You know, you, you know what they call them in Australia? Bob. Boys. Boys. Yeah. B o y s instead of b u o s. No, it's spelt the same, but we pronounce it boys. Yeah, you people got a different word for everything. So. uh and then, you know, and then the guy comes the next day, and this is no boating accident, Ed. As you see, that was a gross scene, too, that I remember, like, the, the crabs were crawling all over what was left of her body. Oh, yes. That was just nastiness. I know. I, I never actually saw it in the uh, cinemas. I saw what? Jaws 2 first in the cinemas because I was, well, I was only five. I couldn't go see it. I was going to say, you were just a kid. I was. I was a little uh, a kid. I could not see it. So, But I did see it you on know, TV. You know, you know what's funny? I showed Jaws to my kids when they were little. They weren't phased at all. Huh. They were just like, oh, okay. I was like, come on, it's the scariest movie ever. And I'm thinking maybe because we watched it on the TV. There's a different experience that happens when you're in a dark theater and yes. it's a big screen. And you, I mean, the, the the shark is massive. It, it doesn't translate. I mean, you know, huh. you're in the safety of your room and you know you put the light on and you're fine and stuff. But when you're in a dark theater with a bunch of strangers and that shark shark comes out of nowhere, you're like on the edge of your seat, you know. Well, again, you you um, mentioned it early that um, you know people were terrified to go into the water. Um, the actual tagline for that you sort of alluded to was um, actually the tagline for Jaws Two because yeah, Jaws just when you Two it was safe. is yeah. just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water, which is the best tagline I think ever for a movie. It explains everything in um in just one sentence for uh jaws too but people were terrified to go to the beach there was some um, there were reports of people who had um this amazing fear um one woman i read about who just couldn't stop yelling shark she just had this phobia and just went yeah. she went um a little bit uh, left of center because of um this movie so um the other oh, thing but, that but, yeah i was gonna say what what it you had Richard Dreyfus at the time. He had American Graffiti. He had, I can't think of the movie, the like the su seduction of blah, blah, blah. Or... Bobby Buzzack. I can't remember, but I know. I've never seen that film. But the well, reason, I, have seen you know, I was going to say, the it's reason cool. he he saw that, he saw like a uh, preview of it and he was yeah. offered Jaws but didn't want it. And then he saw saw that film and he goes, oh my God, my performance is awful. I better say no one's going to hire me. So I better call uh, Steven Spielberg and say, yeah, I'll take the part. Yeah. Yeah. And then the rest of the cast, you got Robert Shaw who famously hated Richard Dreyfus mm. or as he was known back then, Ricky Dreyfus or Rick yeah. Dreyfus. It wasn't Richard Dreyfus. It was Rick. Yeah. And uh, he, they didn't get along well. They, the, the animosity between the two of those characters on screen is true off screen. Cause Robert Shaw thought he was a base of, jackass basically mm -hmm. couldn't stand the kid whatsoever and dreyfus thought robert shaw was a big drunk 
which he did have a bit of an alcohol problem. Yeah. You know, whatever. So, and then, and the other one he got, it was one of the greatest actors ever, underrated, is Roy Scheider, who had come off of The French Connection. Uh-huh. He's just like the Joe guy, the Joe American. He's just the yeah. average Joe. He's just there, just trying to do his job. Just got out there. He's a city guy who takes a job out here on an island, think it's going to be a cushy, you know, kind of retirement type of thing. What can go wrong? What kind of crime is out there in a resort town in Amity? Out in the middle of nowhere, you know, but mm. who knows what's going to happen to the poor guy? That's right. And, he's and they city. added they added his fear of uh, fear of water, water, which yeah. wasn't in the book. So they no? added that. Yeah, so they added that to give him a little. Have bit you read this right. book? Do you own this book, Ed? Um, I do. I my actual copy of the book. Um, I sold at the shop a couple of couple of oh. months ago, but I do is have. A, is, it actually, price, let, is it a price collectible? Um, it's, uh, I, I think I sold it for about 20 bucks, which is pretty good. I mean, Peter well, Benchley, I do have a copy at the shop as well of the deep, which he, the deep, you know, was yeah, he did that other movie. um, yeah. and, and things like that. Um, I should say, since we're talking a bit about, you know, collectibles and uh, merchandise and things like that, this was sort of the first film that they really did a public, uh, publicity blitz on where yeah. a month or so before the film leading and then leading up just a few days after it, they did all these television ads, they did print ads, they did, as you said, those TV interviews. So it really um, got people excited. And that's what essentially, um, you know, helped drive that box office to those uh, record numbers. And there was lots of merchandise as well, which you wouldn't think of necessarily, you know, this is not a kid-friendly film, you know, certainly. Well, it was um, PG here. It was really, oh yeah, it was a PG movie, yeah. I think it it was, I think it was rated. I was certainly M for mature. It was N. It was definitely NRC, which is not recommended nah. for children um, yeah. in Australia. But it because it came out in November, so both that and Jaws two came out in November, which is just about the start of our. Well, this you know, one summer. here was. This is what started that whole summer blockbuster type of thing that Star Wars would take on years later. And, yes, and every movie to this day. And, oh, what's the big summer blockbuster? Jaws is the first one to do that. That's that yes. first Memorial Day weekend, Fourth of July weekend that you know you just take over the whole summer. So, well, they That's came it. out with a number of um, you know uh, merchandise opportunities. One was uh, rubber sharks, which essentially they would um, just have a have a Jaws sticker on the back of the good old rubber shark. They had the uh, Jaws board game, um, which um, I'll just I'll bring up over here. Oh, that one. Yeah. I love that one. I remember that as a kid. Yeah. The mouth was full of a bunch of little different trinkets and you had to get a long hook and you would put it in there and you would pick up the, uh, yeah, there you go. It was almost like this. You were like the dentist really. And you had to get the the stuff out of there. And if you were wrong, the jaws would cut. Yeah. They would snap shut on you. There we go. There's a, there's a bottle or something like that. So, um, yeah, so there was that which came out. Um, they're quite expensive now. To get them in the really? box, they're a couple of hundred dollars. Oh, wow. Um, the other thing, of course, was the amazing soundtrack by uh, John Williams. John Williams, yeah. Um, yeah. Which was absolutely um, amazing. Uh, and again, Tom, if, you listen yep. to that, if you listen to that album, I remember as a kid when they first introduced you to music appreciation, they would play Peter and the Wolf. Oh, yes. And that's when I, first, when I was a kid. I remember being in kindergarten, first grade. They would like, you know, everybody had their own theme song, like, Here's the wolf, boom, 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 and then they'd have the little. Here's comes Peter, blah, blah, blah. and then when you listen to that album, you could close your eyes. You know exactly what's going on in the movie, like when they got the barrels, and oh, he's got two. Mm. He can't go down with two, and you can hear the music, dun, 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 and then the, the whole chase sequence going on. That music is so descriptive. John Williams did a fantastic job on that album that you literally could just put that on in the background and your mind will create the entire movie with the dialogue yes. and the whole thing. So yeah, he did a great job. Was he nominated for an Academy Award? He was nominated one? and won for best score. It also won uh, best, I think it was sound editing and best editing as well. It was nominated for best film and, um, uh, but Spielberg wasn't nominated to? for best director. So what did um, it lose to that year? Now, it lost to um and the star wars lost to annie hall i know that yes. in 77 which was like an outrageous 75 lenny bruce oh that's know. right with um dustin, dustin hoffman, hoffman and valerie prine yeah uh no it, it lost to 
I will put it up right now. I'll put it up right now. Yeah. So Carl Gottlieb, who was um, a friend of Spielberg, who actually is also an actor who you can see in Morgan in movie. Mindy and Laverne and Shirley and things like that. Um, he also um, helped uh, write the script. He brought out these, this great book, The Jaws Log. Yep, I remember that. Yeah. Um, and they that's when uh, we've spoken about these before, where there was a there's a King Kong one, there was one for Raiders oh, Lost the, the making of, yeah. Um, yeah, there's Superman the movie as well. And of course, you know, I've got to bring out the good old Super 8 movie. Oh yeah. You and know, is, they I, I'm gonna say they have Viewmaster, which is a, th- a like a 3D type of thing that you'd put in. I'm I'm th- I'm sure they had it. I don't know. There's well, a lot of Jaws merchandise. So Obviously, Jaws did um, amazing business. It, um, you know, it grossed over two hundred million, and by the end of its run in um, in America, um, made a boatload of uh, you know money worldwide as well. So, of course, they wanted to do a sequel. They oh, had yeah. a director attached to it. Um, Spielberg wasn't involved, but the director um, pulled out, and then Spielberg was, uh, you know, interested in maybe coming back. However um with uh close encounters the third kind so he had to uh um drop out so they um uh god uh, now i'm gonna butcher his name geno Swazo. i'll put it down here because sure, I, that guy yeah. yeah who actually um ended up directing i think he directed supergirl if i'm mistaken but he's done a lot of um tv and things like that so jaws 2 comes along the original cast come back brody's kids are all grown up John Williams comes back with some would say, I know that um, our um, indie casters are uh, Ron Longo and probably uh, Laird Malamud yeah. would say that the score for Jaws 2 is better than the score for Jaws, the original. Um, but Jaws 2 came out. Uh, there's my Super 8 version. Yeah. Yeah. Of, uh, that's the one I really um, remember. I, I remember I read the movie adaptation of that book. Yes. They always had movie adaptations back then. And I remember they, they went inside the mind of the shark to try to give you its motivations. Besides the fact it's just an act of nature and an yeah, eating machine that doesn't think, it doesn't really think about. It. But in the book, I, it was a female shark who was pregnant and she was like oh. coming back to like spawning the area or whatever yeah. like that. And there was that, I remember reading that and going, are you serious? We're giving this, the, the, the shark a motivation for why it's killing people. But there was that too. But again, that's actually not a bad movie as sequels go Jaws you know two what is you're decent. absolutely yeah. right it gets i you know when films the original film is held in such high regard, yeah, high regard and it is yeah. it is a wonderful film it is absolutely yeah. amazing oh, of but course Jaws yeah. two as as a sequel is really quite good um yeah. you know they tried things differently the score is fantastic um, you know, John Williams is back with that. Well, and Scheider's great and the acting's great, yes. you know. Um, and the home that's where you got a lot of Fair merchandise. Road. I should have said they also made uh, for the reading cards. Jaws. No, not for the. No, they did. Card. No. No, the Jaws 2 had trading cards. Yes, it did. But not they the did. first one. No, I saw that. but they did do model kits for Jaw, the original Jaws, which yeah. are pretty cool. You and, can get um, the, I remember you get the Orca, which was the uh, Captain Quint's ship. Yes. And the, the, you could get that. And it was like you could get the shark yeah. coming up and mesh. It was the end of the movie. That's another thing we didn't talk about. Another thing besides, I can't think of the damn guy's name who owed the boat. It's like one of these things. Of course, I know it's like like Big's Dark Lighter. It's one of these things, but I can't think of it right now. But shouldn't drink before the show. But anyway, what happened is when Captain Quint, Robert Shaw, goes down into the shark's mouth and it bites down on him and the blood comes squirting out because he had a little tiny uh, squid they call yeah. it in his mouth and just bit on it and the blood flew i remember that scene haunting me I, to this day I, as soon as i see him slide down there you know he starts going into it and the shark bites him and then takes him in the water it was gross watching that blood squirt out of his mouth like that you know well, and uh that was in the model kit i remember you could buy the model kit of the shark you know, destroying the orca and the ship on its side, and you can make a little Captain Quint going inside of it. So, well, did you know that uh, Spielberg wanted not a lot of red shown? Like, a lot of the characters don't have red, or it's all very muted. Um, yeah. if there is any red, because he wanted the red of the blood to be, you know, oh, shocking, just, so yeah, pops. really shocking. So, on there, so yeah. Jaws 2, um, it made over a hundred million dollars, it was a uh, 
it it opened actually. Here's an interesting piece of trivia. It opened the Tell same da- the same weekend as Greece. Really? Okay. Oh yep. yeah, seventy eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. and both films made I think in their opening day like nine million dollars. It's the first time that two films had ever made that much at the same amount of time. And obviously, mm. Greece went on to make more money than Jaws too. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Both were you know super successful. So I think people forget that um, Jaws two was a success and is the best regarded. We won't talk about. Jaws, oh, 3D, no, Jaws 3D, which I did see. 3D. That's a I 3D did see movie. That. Dennis Quaid, and uh, I saw that in the theaters. That was a bad movie. I remember Roy Scheider doing an interview with Rona Barrett, who was a uh, like a Hollywood reporter back in the day. Was she on Entertainment him, Tonight? Yeah, I bet she would go on to that. But back in the 70s, she would be on like 2020, which was a news program. And I remember they interviewed Roy Scheider about Jaws 2. And he was sitting there doing the interview and they said, what if they do a Jaws 3? And he kind of looks at her and he kind of like gets ready to jump off the uh, the boardwalk they were on into the water because he didn't want to be any part of a Jaws 3. But you know what? It's a good thing it wasn't a Jaws 3 because that was a crappy movie. Yes. But, uh, yeah, I, I did. Oh, he had Blue Thunder. I'm thinking, did he ever have a big yeah, hit after was- that? But after Jaws 2, he had Blue Thunder. Of course, he did the Bob Fosse story, which he got yes. nominated for Academy Award for Best Actor. And then he went on to, uh, well, he went on to Sequest, Sequest DSV. DSV. Yeah. And then he did a bunch of other movies before. He was in the Punisher movie with Thomas Jane. And then he passed away. I think he was only like 70. He had cancer mm. uh, at the end, though. But he was a great actor. Whenever you saw Roy Scheider, you just you just liked the guy instantaneously. It's like yes. he never did a bad performance. He was always really cool. Robert Shore then goes down Force 10 from Navarone. When Which Harrison was, Ford, yeah, that was 78. And then I remember I think, thinking, how, how big a cast is that movie? You have Han Solo, Captain uh, Quint, and Apollo, Apollo Creed. Creed. Jaws. Hang on. You've got Jaws. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Richard well. Keel. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you've got Barbara Bach, who was gorgeous at the time. Yeah. And then you had Franco Nero. Yes. And Edward Fox. That was a great cast, too. That's another thing. That's so not Ro- a bad Edward, movie at all. No, it's not a bad movie. Robert Shaw had a good career after that film as well and is robert shaw also in the deep or am i thinking of a different actor it's nick nolte jacqueline Bissett, and somebody I'm else i'm thinking i am thinking but i i have a feeling that robert shaw passed away in 1978 i remember he died of a heart attack and maybe like 50 he wasn't that old no but uh he did a lot of drinking of course before that probably the best known role he ever had was from rush with love yes where he played the baddie in the James Bond second movie back in the day with Sean Connery back in 1964. And with regards with to that, his, his wife suggested that he he wasn't that interested in that uh, doing the Bond film, and his wife suggested that he should do it, and yeah. he wasn't that interested in doing Jaws because he didn't like the book, and his wife suggested, and his secretary suggested he do Jaws as well, and he goes, well, since they were right with uh, Bond, uh, I think I should do Jaws. So, oh, was, see, um, there you go. Listen to your always listen to your wife, kitties. That's right. And you'll be better off for it too. But no, no then Jaws three, no. and then the horrible movie, uh, Jaws, Jaws the four, Jaws Revenge with uh, Lorraine Michael Gary, Kane. Michael Michael Caine, and uh, they they give him crap about Jaws four, but it's like it paid for a beautiful house in Bermuda. So I mean, Kane is he's not going to hold back. He does things for the money, and yep. that movie was done just for the money, and that was it. But it also spawned a lot of cheap ripoff movies. We had Richard Harris and Bo Derek in Orca. Yes. Which was a bad movie. And then we had Tentacles, which is a movie I saw in the movie theaters, which was about a, a man-eating octopus that was stalking people. I, that Why? Was, I, I was a man-eating uh, octopus the other day at a restaurant. But anyway. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. so, and then uh, there was, don't uh, forget, Piranha. There was Piranha Mako, was Mako Jewels of Death. Um, it sort of spawned Blue that. Blue Water, film. White Death. My dad took me to see that movie. It was like a documentary, but it was about real sharks and such like that. But I'll tell you one thing. All the sharking caused a lot of people to go out and start hunting. There's a bad side to this, too. People yes. would go out and start killing sharks because everyone saw Jaws and they thought every single shark was a man-eater, which is not the case at all. And it's very rare that people actually get attacked by sharks, even where you live, where it's like Shark City down there. It is. It's not. 
it doesn't happen a lot. I mean, let me tell you, up here at the Cape, uh, Cape Cod, you can go swimming in the water off of Chatham, and they'll take aerial photos where you're swimming, not too far away from you. There's a big black shadow in the water, and it's a big great white shark. It's happened a lot more in the last couple of years because the water's gotten warmer, so the sharks come closer to shore. But there's a huge seal population up in Turo, Massachusetts. You'll go up there, and the seals are all there, and a lot of them have big scars on their face because the sharks come, and they eat the seals. And lots of times, folks will get attacked by sharks only because they think it's a seal because yep. you'll see guys in a wetsuit on a, a surfboard paddling out there, and the shark comes up and goes after it. It's not like they got a malicious let's go eat people today type of no. thing going on. And the other thing I was going to say is Land Shark, yes. which was parody on Saturday Night Live. Chevy Chase would dress up. Uh, they would knock on people's door, and you'd hear the Jaws music, and they'd say, who is it? And he's like, Land Shark. And they would just do this bit with a head kind of like you have back there, and he would just yes. eat people and take them away. So that was they, – they wrote the Jaws parody for i think a couple years everybody was doing jaws jokes mad magazine had their jaws version of it you know all that type of thing so it was a very successful movie probably the biggest hit until i'm going to say star wars comes out in 77 i mean that's Mm. all it was yeah absolutely right t-shirts everybody had the t-shirt a white shirt with a shark on the outside everybody loves sharks that famous uh the famous you know the uh the well essentially this which was um the artwork yeah. that was for the uh, novel and they got the um, artist to also do the movie poster as well. Um, but There's a today, Jaws video game. There is. My kids played it. You were the shark and you got to go, you got to go and eat people. Yeah. What's uh, there's been crazy. a few there's, uh, of late, you know, you know, we talk about obviously pop culture here in the show and there is a lot of um, resurgence of uh, Jaws memorabilia. My, Coffee cup, which I got at a supermarket the other day. Uh, well, that's another thing, you know, that's sort of uh, taking on the uh, the modern day uh, Jaws in a bad way, I guess. But there are yeah. pop vinyls, there's Jaws board games as well. There's the t shirts we got. Um, yeah, there's a Funko, going, yeah, there's, there's you know, you know. t shirt and things like that. So there's lots of stuff out there if you are interested. I think there's, there's a, even a Hallmark ornament for Jaws. I'm I sure there is, that. but there's also some great documentaries out there. If you are interested, if we have, you know, going, Oh, I'd like to find out a little bit more. Well, I was um, going to say one last thing before we wrap yeah. it up, the best jaws interactive event or whatever was at universal studios. Oh, of course. They used to have the jaws ride. They don't have it any longer. They had it out in California. They had it down here in Florida. I remember they had it in the early 2000s because I took my son, Owen, and Spencer. To this day, they still haunt me about that because if you go to the island uh, adventure of the Hollywood, Florida, there's uh, a big lagoon in the middle of the, uh, the, the amusement park, and you could cross over mm-hmm. to the other side, and they had the Jaws ride. Now, I didn't think anything about it, so I took my kids on board. They didn't realize what Jaws was. So as you go, the tour guide was giving the thing, hey, welcome to Amity Island, and this is where the boats come. Uh-oh, and you see the little fin, dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. And they would go, oh, let's get a shotgun, and they'd shoot the water, and it would put the shark down. But I forgot they did have a big mechanical shark. So at the very end, as you get close to the dark, you're dun 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 and the shark would come up out of the water. Unlike the movie, this thing did work. And it came out in all its glory with the teeth and everything. My son Owen screamed so loud when that shark came out of the water. To this day, he still mentions that to me when we go to Universal. So I don't know why they got rid of it. I don't know who thought it was a good idea to get rid of the Jaws ride over at Universal Studios. But if they ever go back and want to return with something classic, bring back the Jaws ride and the King Kong ride too. Mm. While at it. But the Jaws ride was a... A fantastic i was lucky enough to have done that as well and i remember it all decked out like it was um 1975 it was um the they had all the uh the banners and all that the the red white and blue and it was it was huge that you know yeah Um, the only thing left is when you go down there they have the docks like you're down there in amity and they have the big shark oh yes i had my photo with that you can take your picture under yeah that's the only thing left of the big jaws uh ride that's down at universal still so i'll see if i can yeah. dig out some of the photos that i took that was in the old days when 
it wasn't digital cameras. It was. That was a real photograph. It was real photo. So I'll have to, I'll have to go digging. But um, I was going to say, there's some great uh, online documentaries. Jamie Benning does an amazing documentary called Inside. James Gillette is another guy that goes around and does the. uh, the shark, the shark is still working. He did Which all the is, locations. Which uh, is narrated by Roy Scheider. Um, yep. There's some really good ones. Uh, there's a 4K version of Jaws that has just been released, which is really good. Um, and there's some really good, um, uh, you know, information on there. Uh, and there's deleted like. scenes too, by the way. There were a few. They they filmed a there lot were. actually. There is quite a few deleted scenes in there, and you can yeah. watch them on uh, the Blu-ray or DVD. I think yeah, because Spielberg DVD. doesn't. He does not go back and re-edit his movies and put deleted scenes in there. But there are a lot of or uh, different takes, if you will, for Jaws yeah. or outtakes or something like that. Apart so, from yeah. Close Encounters, maybe we should do a Close Encounters show. Maybe we should. Yeah, there's a it's, lot. Yeah, he did the special edition. I remember yeah. he did go back and add scenes of the inside the mothership and all that. Yeah. So yeah. But anyway, that that wraps it up. That's it. That's it for Jaws. So um, go watch it if you haven't seen it. Odds are, I'm sure you've seen it many times. But it's probably worth revisiting because it's always um, good for a little bit of a fright, especially here in Australia where it's summertime. And we, in fact, I was just at the beach the other day. And of course, what do I think of? Jaws. That scene, you know what they the had camera, in Martha's Vineyard? You know, the camera going in, that fantastic... Uh, oh, that shot where it's like... Alfred Hitchcock shot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. They, uh, they, in Martha's Vineyard in July for the Shark Fest, because they also have a big shark tournament up there, they have... Uh, you could rent like a little boat or take your raft out there, and they have a screen that floats in the water in the lagoon, yes. and they project yes. Jaws on it, so you could actually watch, like instead of a drive-in, it's called a dive-in. And you go into it and you sit in the water and you watch Jaws as you're in the water, which is kind of creepy because kids, here's a little tip for you. Don't ever go in the water in the early morning hours and at night because that's when sharks feed. Don't do that. That's a bad thing. Okay. And don't put your hands on the side of a boat if you're out in the ocean because they see something dangling. It's, it's not good. Not good. That's right. Anyway, that's, that's a it. public that's service announcement. That is, it's a PSA for you kiddies out there. So, so if you um, enjoyed our show, thank you. That's very kind of you. How can you find out more and uh, be alerted to when we come up with something new? Well, Ed, it is as easy as going into a town hall meeting and taking your fingernails and scratch <laughs> chalkboard and getting everybody crazy. All you have to do is hit the like. Oh, well, you can hit the like button too. That's always fun. Yep. But hit the subscribe button and you'll go on the boat next time Ed and I are going out to sea. Make sure you bring your Dramamine in case you get a little seasick. And don't worry, we'll bring some porgies back for you so you can cook them up and have them for dinner. Just like Sheriff Brody did. That sounds good. So that's it for another excellent adventure with Mitch and Ed. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ed Dollister. And I'm Captain Mitch Halleck. (laughs) And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.